Welcome back, friends. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is JJ. I'm your host and the convener of this uh, session. Um, for those of you who haven't been to one of these before, this is the digital version of a thing that I would normally be doing in my house. Obviously, inviting you all uh, into a indoor space is not the thing to be doing in our public health situation right now. We have three special sets of uh, music and poetry this evening. Uh, first off will be uh, Karen Ashbrook and Paul Ortz, and then we have Husna Hajra Hashem will be uh, sharing some poetry, um, and then Sarah Donner will be closing out the evening. All three really, well, all four, uh, three sets, four artists, all amazingly talented. Uh, I'm really grateful for all of them. And I'm grateful for you to be here to sort of provide an audience and listen for them. Um, we'll uh, invite you to, if you know how to unmute yourself and remute yourself, invite you to, uh, for the first set, um, use that spacebar key and you can provide a little bit of feedback to Karen and Paul by applauding or cheering uh, after their sets or after their songs. Um, and, um, and I'll invite you to practice that for, with me for one second just so we can sort of make sure we're figuring out the mute button properly and make sure that we're, yes, you, know, that's you can also do the ASL applause, exactly. Sign language applause so they can see you that away. So why don't you join me one second in unmuting yourself and letting us know if you're out there and just saying a little woo-ha, welcome. Thank you. And now we remute ourselves. Let me still the remute. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Um, and if I don't see you remuting yourself, I will then mute you. Um, there we go. You got it. Perfect. Um, so now that we've got the little tech things taken out of the way, uh, I'll have some more announcements later, but we're just gonna jump into a set of music. So first, let me figure out how I can, I lost them, see the tech things, there we are. I'm gonna spotlight oh, yes. our friends, there they are. And I'm gonna de-spotlight myself because who needs to see me anymore? Um, so let's do one more time and uh, let's give a quick round of applause. Welcome to Karen and Paula who are here to share some music with us.
Beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a little sampler of Irish music. We started. Bravo. With a, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we started with a couple of slip jigs. Another jig will do. That's a funny name for that. Um, and drops of brandy. And then we went into a hornpipe, Cronin's. And we ended with a reel, The Moving Clouds, um, which was composed as a party piece by an accordion player named Neil Gow uh, several decades ago, many decades ago. So wow. now we're going to do something quite different. Um, one of the things I do, I'm a therapeutic musician. And uh, just about a year ago, well, we're almost at the one year mark, March 13th was the last day I was actually in the hospital. I play for patients at the bedside. Um, and I'm actually playing for patients again via Zoom a few hours a week anyway. Volunteers so, take the iPads around. Yeah. Great idea. Um, I'm on staff, but uh, yes, it's very helpful. And this tune, I have a couple of recordings of meditative music, just solo dulcimer. And this next tune comes from that. It's all this particular recording. It's the opening track is called Kimiad which um, actually means farewell. It's a Breton tune from the French Celts. And all the Celtic nations, there's seven of them, <clears throat> border the sea. They all have shores. So uh, you will hear a little bit of the ocean. This tune very much reminds me of the ocean. The ocean, that would be me. That would be Paul, yes. Paul is very versatile. <laughs>
pas. Karen, since you're not looking at the chat, I'll relay a question from someone that was asking that you introduce all of the fabulous instruments that are mysterious looking. Oh yeah, people. so I'm on a hammered dulcimer and at the end of our performance, I can hold it up, but right now I'm hooked up to a pedal for my damper. So that's my instrument. And it goes back to medieval times as an instrument. This version is the American traditional version, mostly from the North, from New England. Um, this was an ocean drum full of shot. The drum, it has, yeah. All these little balls running around. Uh, the it. artist who uh, action. And, uh, well, you've come to Heart Guitar City, uh, the instrument that I, uh, my favorite instrument. It all started with this. Uh, it belonged to the father of a friend of mine uh, who was a professional a bluegrass musician who traveled all around the country and bought every uh, old instrument he, he could find in them. the 60s. Yeah. And uh, I got this and got really curious about it and started looking into harp guitars and... <laughs> they grow. They what grow. Say? Don't ever get your first harp guitar. Uh, they'll take over your life. Um, so I'll tell... Uh, we'll this one is a later. Gibson from the World War I time and it has... Uh, 10 extra strings. It's like a regular guitar with extra bass strings. And uh, the one that I played beginning is a new one that's only 10 years old. Uh, and it has six bass strings. They are fanned out and it's a lot easier to play. Your batting average goes up the fewer strings you have to hit the right bass notes. And this is my... Uh, uh, Italian? My Italian made... Uh, button accordion. Button accordion. Uh, before piano accordions came around, this was sort of the standard, and I grew up in Belgium, and when the old guys were playing in Belgium, this was the kind of accordion they were playing. I was very happy to find uh, a new version of this. I had to have it made in Italy. Uh, so we are going to go from the sublime to the ridiculous, because we like to do that, and we have to give a shout out to our friends in Texas who love this next song which has a chorus Clint and Mary Moses we've done house concerts in their home in Texas and they have electricity and water we're so happy for them but this has a chorus you will get it this is the classics in the uh, program tonight it might bring you back to your high school or college days Paul was a classics major, so it's very perfect. If you listen to the rhymes you would swear if it was written by an Irish poet just based on the rhymes, but it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. Here we go. He heard the 
sirens sing their lullaby. He poked a cyclops in the eyeball. Ulysses sailed the ocean after he woke the Trojan and then sailed the course for home. there from afar. Yeah, I know they were singing, so uh, that's, yes, that was for you, Mary, um, especially. So it's February. I know we're at the end of the month, but it's still February, and we wanted to do something in honor of Black History Month, which happened to involve playing one of my favorite tunes, so I didn't really need an excuse for this. Um, but this, this tune was composed by a musician named Greg Knote in honor of a very special occasion in our country's history. Uh, we had another special occasion this year in January. It was, um, it's called Obama's March to the White House, written in 2008. And, um, and then, you know, what's all this new? We, we first put this set together last year. We had a concert in February last year, and um, this next one is related to what was in the news at the time, although it was actually composed in uh, 1868. It was composed for President Andrew Johnson, and gosh darn, if it didn't become relevant again this year, it's called the Impeachment Polka. So, but first we've got Obama's March to the White House.
it before but you know guitar players their sound goes away from them but he's got an addition up near his head and he can he can hear himself really well for the bass strings it helps them bring out a little more so this is from around um, 1917 Dyer brothers yeah. made it they say that uh, you know those Gibson mandolins all have that curl the bluegrass mandolins so you can see that here this curl yeah. um, and somebody had the idea in Minnesota of extending that curl all the way to make a beautiful, shapely instrument. Uh, uh, so this was, was a Swedish immigrant, uh, Knudsen, who came up with that idea, apparently. Uh, this song is French. It's called La Nonchalante. Uh, and uh, it's about um, a boat that's called La Nonchalante, and the person who uh, the singer is the person who's been on that boat for many decades since the 30s and uh, who is looking nostalgically at all the time he spent on the canals in France um, and bad weather, uh, waiting times at the uh, Écluse at uh, Locks. And uh, I love that song the first time I heard it. <laughs> La vie a passé sous les ponts Et le bateau est encore bon Et le temps n'est pas à la paresse Si je débarque, il ne me restera Qu'à me saouler au café du port Sans avoir comme un cœur à bord Dans la cale de moteur qui va La nonchalante, la nonchalante On va pas se quitter comme ça Toi sans ta coque, toi sans moi, la nonchalante, la nonchalante, la nonchalante, on va pas oublier tout ça, ils disent qu'ils veulent, nous on s'en va, la nonchalante. 
Puis la fin des années 30, on en a vu des chargements, de la pluie et du mauvais temps, que tu sois montante ou avalante, le soleil qui dissout la brume, le canard du midi sous la lune, les fins de semaine enfantes, il y a eu aussi de bons moments. Ah non chalante, ah non chalante, on va pas se quitter comme ça, moi sans ta gueule, toi sans mes bras, la non chalante, la non chalante, la non chalante, on peut pas oublier tout ça, ils disent qu'ils veulent, nous on s'en va, la non chalante.
Thank you so very much. Um, Karen, I love the range of sound that you get out of that thing with the dampers oh, and all. Here, I'll Amazing. Put you in. And Paul, when here. we counted your instruments. Oh. There's what it looks like from the other side. Sorry mm -hmm. we didn't have two cameras set up, but we're in between software right now. <laughs> totally great. And Paul, when we counted your instruments, you didn't mention your voice. Is ah, well, so, so great. It's an instrument. It's true. Such a gift. Um, thank you. Um, Karen, I've had your Hills of Aaron CD on my repeat playlist uh, for like 25 years now, I think, or something oh my gosh. like that. Um, They're but I didn't, since then, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, and no, I'm just saying that it's been a long time. So I took for granted, I didn't really introduce you guys, but maybe you could give us just a, a quick second of telling us where you're from and how you came to this music, uh, for folks who aren't familiar with your music yet. Sure. So, um. I'm from upstate New York, but we've been in Maryland for quite a while now. And uh, I grew well, I grew up playing classical in old time, really got into Irish, and that launched me into, I lived overseas for five years, a couple years in Europe and a few years in Asia. Eventually moved to this area because it has a wonderful Irish music scene. And I built my first hammer dulcimer in high school, 1976. and. Uh, did not know it would become my profession, but that's what paid for my travels around the world. I was a street musician. So, and then, you know, I ended up meeting this guy who's from Belgium, who used to be in a bluegrass band um, at a dulcimer festival in West Virginia in Shepherdstown. She was my teacher. Uh, that's what he says. <laughs> so, yeah, we ended up getting together. And then, of course, with Paul, we do a lot of European repertoire. As I married well. into Irish music. She married into French and Flemish. And the rest of the stuff. So yeah. great. And then we we have several recordings. So and they're downloads. Everything's on my website, KarenAshbrook.com, and I we have newsletters and all that good stuff. Yeah. So one of the things you'll see in the chat, or we'll pass along, is that we've maybe got another hospital gig for you. Uh, people are already asking some questions, so we'll have more connections down the road. As Karen mentioned, um, I'll send along a, um, a follow-up email to those of you who are SVP'd, um, sending the links to everyone's websites so that you can support these artists. Um, and as Karen mentioned, there are records that you can buy, not just stream on, on Spotify. And the reason I mention that is because we want to support artists. We want artists to be able to thrive and continue to make their work. I always give this plug, but it's so easy to have free culture in the short term in our world, right? Just download it all off the internet, stream it, stream it. But artists get pennies if like 10 million people listen to their track over and over again on Spotify. Yeah, and so a much better way to support these artists is to buy their records, um, to send them money directly to support their projects, to tell other people about their work. So again, I'll set up a, send out a follow up email with invites to the next shows and ways that you can support the artists directly. We're now going to go into a quick breakout room. Um, if you were here in my house. We'd have a set change moment. There'd be food and drink to replenish. This is where you might have a chance to catch up with an old friend or make a new one uh, while waiting in the bathroom line or getting some lentil soup in the kitchen. Um, so the op breakout rooms are optional, but I invite you to step in them. A topic of conversation if you need one is simply to discuss how you came to be here. 
uh, this evening, and we'll be back in 10 minutes uh, for Husna set. But first, let's unmute for a second and give another round of applause, appreciation for Karen and Paul, because that was really a treat. Hi. Welcome back, everyone. Here we are for our next set. Um, we're switching gears into poetry here. And so I'm going to uh, ask you to unmute for a second to welcome Husna, um, who will be uh, sharing a set with us. And then we're going to, um, uh, oops, let me spotlight, yes, spotlight for everyone. Technical glitches, great. Um, Let's welcome Hasna, and then I'll ask you to keep muted for their whole set so that we don't interrupt uh, this bit of poetry that they'll be then sharing with us. Thank you, Hasna, for being here. Everyone, welcome. Woo! Ah. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start by reading work that actually isn't mine. I'll be reading from this really pretty blue book. Um, this is Undrowned, Black Feminist Lessons from Marine Mammals by Alexis Pauline Gums. And this book, it's so beautiful. I haven't read all of it yet, but it's really meant to be used as an oracle or a meditation. Alexis Pauline Gums kind of studied these marine mammals and found ways that they were feminist and queer and in alignment with kind of Black liberatory um, modalities. And so, each of the sections has a theme and the first one is listen. And I'll just read a little bit of this. Once upon a time, there was a giant sea mammal who weighed up to 23 tons swimming in the Bering Sea. In 1741, a German naturalist, quote, discovered Hydrodalamus gigas swimming large and lux at least three times bigger than the contemporary manatee. Within 27 years, the entire species was ext extinct, killed on thousands of European voyages for fur and seal skin. So she knows what we know. It is dangerous to be discovered. She had blubber and was hunted for it. They say she couldn't sing. The only sound was her breathing, but she could hear for miles and miles and miles. What a loss for listening. How can we honor it? the archive of your breathing. Some say your death was only incidental. You were so conveniently located on the favorite path of sealers and fur traders between Russia and North America. Those 27 years were like a gold rush, fueled by the desires of fashionable Europeans for fur hats and coats, a fashion trend sparked by colonizing North America, a supposedly endless supply of fur. They were on their way to get seal skin and fur. They would kill you and eat you during the journey there. Does that make anyone feel better? Keep anyone warm? That your extinction, the first known extinction of a marine mammal caused by humans was collateral in the pursuit of other deaths. Oh, you rough mermaid. What are you teaching us about breath? Oh, massive vegetarian. What we do now that you're, what do we do now that our listening is that much smaller? I think you are more than evidence of the deadliness of a world in which skin is for sale at a premium. I think you are more than another testament of the stark implications of European voyaging, more than an indictment of the rush, more than the folly of a dominant way of living that changes the planet quickly, thoughtlessly forever, more than the deadliness of an insatiable hunger born of chasing things other than sustenance. The hunger outlived you. I feel it chasing me too. What can I do to honor you now that it is too late? I would honor you with the roughness of my skin, the thickness of my boundaries, the warmth of my own fat, I would honor you within my quiet and my breathing, my listening further and further out and in. I would honor you with the slowness of my movement, contempl contemplative and graceful. I would try to be like you, even though they say it's out of fashion. I will remember you, not by the name written in the possessive of the one they say, quote, discovered you after generations of indigenous relationship. I will say, 
Once upon a time, there was a huge and quiet swimmer, a plant-based, rough-skinned listener, a fat and graceful mammal. And then I will be quiet so I can hear you breathing. And then I will be breathing and you'll remind me, do not rush. And the time in me will hush. And then we will be listening for real. So that's just a little section of kind of connecting us to other ways of being in the world um, as mammalian creatures and kind of the importance of recognizing cross species relationships, um, which I think is really beautiful and important now um, when we think about uh, the, the conditions, our, our lives conditions um, and kind of thinking about how can we be expansive in our understandings of what connection actually is and what connection can mean to us. Um, I'll share a couple of things today. Um, more recent, the, a couple of things part of different projects. So over the summer, the um, most recent former youth poet laureate Mia Concepcion and the current poet laureate Trapita Mason convened a bunch of poets to create a video um, through the Free Library of Philadelphia called An O to Unity and Descent. And so we kind of submitted a very small section of work and then the rest of the, the full pieces were presented all together several months ago. So I'll share the full poem that I um, contributed to that project that is still under revision. Dispatch 2024. I did not consent to society, and yet the birds still sing. Everything has an umbilical except for the empire. The orange man on my glass screen instructs the empire's residents to puncture their skin and leak in chemicals. We are water, and we are instructed to inject our interior oceans with poison. I do not remember the orange man's name. I do not remember where the orange man lives. I do not remember the beginning or the end of his reign. I do not recognize the empire as ever existing. I do not remember the flag of the empire. I remember only its construction, artificial lattices of steel built without a loving mother to be tenderly cut from. Each day I perform an inventory of the master's tools. The mining of the earth equals a body excavated for Cities, roads, assassination. I remember orange and alabaster men for centuries raising flags and teaching our empire's residents the easiest ways to die. I remember the men killing the original residents of this place I was stolen to. I remember the empire's midwife removing my brother dead from my mother's birth canal because when she said she was in pain, they told her that her pain was not real. I remember this as an instruction of the empire to the fake scientists, a message from a man, TM, and the CDC to the empire's residents. There is no separation. Would they have excavated, preserved, and displayed my mother as the far Western empire did Sarchi? She is always near. Miss Sarchi Bartman's memory is held in my memory as an opened wound. The wound refuses the confines of this poem. The wound rejects pity. The wound demands calendula salve, warm water, cotton thread and a fresh needle, dried cedar burning over a shrine. The wound demands a mirror, tells me to see my image as a reflection of my matriarchal bloodline, a trail of blood trickling between umbilical cords for centuries behind and in front of me. I'll read a little bit. Um, this is my chat book that was published uh, several years ago now, it's, it's not in print anymore, but um, I'll read a little bit from here. Saccharine cracked ancestral pool of blood for a hive. Your lips were bitter lemon peels, zest heavier than lead, prodding through a skin predestined, predetermined for more than your expectations. You wanted me to move in the Muslim way. Translation, for my soul to leave its body, for the quick seconds between representing birth, 
life, death, judgment, copious amounts of LODS cells oozed out of your nail beds as you separated the flesh from my bone, digging through, into, out of, me, the ocean being the expulsion of my insides. This is not a metaphor, not syntax nor over-exaggerated imagery. It is simply a recounting of the occurrence, energy leading to the preservation of self, life, only part of the whole, giving way to lifelessness, no part of the coast willing to claim us whole, only as crystallized fractures from the ridges between jar and lid. Back door swinging shut, rides just to ask for love, no love, empty honey jars, light streaming through large windows, holding, asking you not to fight with her, looking up how I was looking down, playing with fish eyes on kitchen floor, dropping slinky down basement stairs, haughty emptiness. Why is darkness so familiar without you in it? You didn't even bother to stay in the shadows. Instead, how am I supposed to forget, forgive? Psychosis makes full eyes water into extended fullness. You were always the one who killed me in my dreams. Yet when I almost died, you whispered empty apologies. How I do not appreciate you. How I feel no connection to you. Why do figs fall off fig trees and rot at the bases? Why did your love fall from your heart and rot around my ankles? Rusted love in the back shed, honeysuckles in the yard growing on gates, summer sun down yellow slide, weak. I wonder if you ever visit those buried bodies. I wonder if those miscarried fetuses rot in earth like cicadas and figs do around tree bases and your love does around my ankles. I never wanted you to be sorry. I just wanted you to try and fill the honey jars with more love, place the figs in your heart, reverse the collision of the suicide as it unattempted itself, roll apologies into the fish eyes, bite honeysuckles on your own time, Buy the fetus a headstone and stop moving on when there is too much you've left empty. I wonder if you ever worry about the growing fetuses inside your new wife, never being birthed. Maybe you were always the problem. Bad genes, ugly genes in big timberlands. I always stood around your ankles and you never picked me up. Maybe that is why I am still down. On behalf of anyone who has waded this tide, you said that someone looked over you, past you, eyes glaring into whitewashed walls, eyes settling on legacy student, POC being PO contraband, translation, nothing. Translation, the infiltration of an insular area with otherness, that previously regarded, and in the regarding, erased, that existing when told not to, you spilled these memories to me in my college interview. You spilled, coating my ears in toxic filth, turning me off from the school entirely. After the Super Bowl, I imagined a dozen St. Joe's students baptized in the Schuylkill. I imagined a dozen U Penn students gunned down on Chestnut after blocking traffic, you know, like protesters are. A dozen Temple students arrested on Broad. Think about displacement the nine white boys next door banging on and screaming through my bedroom wall, beer drunk, how I went part in none of it. You said, do I, you, we notice how no one was killed this time? Listen to me, do you hear it? The inflection or lack thereof. It is moments like these I think of mouths full of grasses, feces baked into a pie. I will pour the accumulated tension as melted wax back into your torso instead of telling you these stories. Again, this is not a metaphor, just life. I will puncture my own veins and pop carbon dioxide into bloodstream, unhook detoxifying IV, and won't pray for the moving tectonic plates to take me home. But what does this say of my skin's gravity against the world? What does this say of flesh torn inside out, honey roasted cicadas? hexagonal wax, but memoried metaphor. Where are the lines or curvatures between your skin and the rest of the world? And I have a couple more things. 
and computer. Also over the summer, I wrote um, kind of more of a mini essay for my work. I work at Kelly Writers House at um, my school at Penn. And so there was kind of a panel um, over the summer related to race. And I'll read, yeah, I'll read this. Um, really it's time bound. So when I reread this, I could really tell I was like, yeah, I really did write this in June. Um, so there are references um, to military occupation, to my city being under military occupation liberatory transnational realities. What I am attempting to capture today is the deep tradition of transnationalism within grassroots movements that has so beautifully threatened state apparatuses across the globe. Historically, the most marginalized within a quote society are the quote minority or global majority. And in the case of the city of Philadelphia specifically quote majority minority. This language of quantification is oftentimes used to extinguish the efforts of the marginalized towards unification and liberation from the systems that ultimately threaten our well beings. Before offering some examples of transnationalism, it is important to me to ground my understanding and a recognition of what, quote, brought me here in the first place. Chattel slavery and the genocide of indigenous peoples are the foundational terrorisms birthed by settler colonists on Turtle Island and enslaved African people were the first currency in the empire named the United States of America. This reality does not exist in isolation from slave patrols to the police, to the countless murders of black people at the hands of the police to current Philadelphia military occupation. And as a Philadelphian, I would be remiss not to mention the anarcho-primitivist anti-authoritarian MOVE family organization by name. What transnationalism does for the people is act as a gossamer thread, a bodily vein, or a thin spider's web to connect people across space, which inherently undermines the power of the state to continue to subjugate and repress the power of the people. The efforts of transnationalism further extend to the efforts of peoples organizing against imperial and interventionist powers from borders beyond their own. Therefore, transnationalism is dealing with what is within as well as with what is without. From Philadelphia to Syria, it is the people who resist attacks by their own governments upon themselves. From Iran to Cuba, it is the people who resist intervention by outside forces by simultaneously protecting the most vulnerable affiliated with those regime change efforts. Um, the examples are during the Iranian hostage crisis, the release of black people and women. And in the case of Cuba, the decision to offer a Sada Shakur political asylum from the United States. From the Black Panther Party to the Zapatista, it is, Zapatistas, it is the people who exercise their rights to self-defense. From Palestine to Ferguson, it is the people who um, communicated via Twitter how to treat tear gas. From Seattle to Rojava, it is the people who exercise their rights to autonomy by seizing land from the state, from US prisons to Japanese internment camps to ICE detention facilities. It is the people who plot their escapes. From Marcus Garvey's Black Star Line to Jill Scott Heron's cries that, quote, the revolution will not be televised. It is the people who challenge traditional and mainstream media. And so, so many more examples. I hope these examples of transnationalism and reminders of the ways states work on systemic levels to enact violence upon their people ultimately inspire you to interrogate your privileges and inspire you to take action in whatever way you are able. And I'll read the last poem about my city. Um, this city, my city, after Fatima Eska. A white woman speaks to me. Who are your people? Where are you from? West Philly, I reply. Where are you from? I am African American. I'm in your ancestry. Where are you really from? I do not know. You do not know? I do not know. I do know the city, my city, that when I open my eyes and look at my people, 
I see a hurricane. I ask her, how do you quiet storm? How do you secret everlasting strength? These are my people and I find them on the street and shadow. One, Uncle Khalid's molar teeth gnaw on Miss Swack on the MFL train platform and his good Nikes and black though but us are prayer time. Two, Aya sucks all of the cheetah's dust off of her fingers, one at a time beneath the Ramadan moon. Three, Bilal, the reincarnated Mu'addin of the fourth floor of the middle school, rides his bike down Parkside Avenue with his friends, but only on the back wheel. Allah dog tags around necks and starched white tees, shape ups and hair grease. Four, Angela drives the 10 trolley west. Her voice greets me, salam. And if Shahid becomes a prefix to my name, Ya Allah, my Allah, let them catch me too. Mid breath, glasses off, magnolia blossom in hand, the petals falling as snowflakes the dissonance of gold and silver. Please let them remember me as more than this not knowing. Let them remember me as I remember them. More than an exotic fish in or outside of water. We are an entire storm. This fully formed black Muslim West Philadelphia, a jagged clawed thing bearing its teeth tenderly. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you for sharing your words with us. Um, really a gift. And I'm kind of bummed that that chapbook of yours is out of print, but I'm looking forward to whatever you write next in the world. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, tonight is a little bit of a blast from that past greatest hits or just joys for me of, I had the pleasure of crossing paths with Husna many years ago um, through work with the Interfaith Center. And it's been a gift to sort of um, watch you grow and share your words in the world. And um, yeah, just um, really uh, grateful for, for your sharing and also your invitation to action. You know, I appreciate that we all have ways that we can act in the world to help shape it. And that's our responsibility. Um, and you know, Karen, I've known for 25 years and Sarah who's up next uh, played house concerts here a long time ago. Um, I also thank you for sharing Undrowned with us as a little intro. Um, I, I'm I so glad I bought, <laughs> this is an aside, I bought this book and I was like, I just want I didn't even read all, like I said, I was just like, I just want people to like read this. Mm -hmm. um, it's and just be... to read Alexis Pauline Gums in general, she's really just so important. So, so in the literary plugging department of the evening, um, one of your poems referenced Turtle Island, which is a phrase I hadn't heard until three days ago, maybe, but I'm reading uh, Robin Wall Kimmerer's Braided Sweetgrass. I love grass. that, yeah. It's been gifted the to me. The audio book is oh, how I'm I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. It's been, uh, Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teaching of Plants by Robin Wall Kimmerer. There's mm -hmm. also a gorgeous Krista Tippett yeah. interview with her. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's been gifted to me twice and I've gifted it to other people before opening it and reading it um, because it just came up. And so I'm finally, finally reading it. Um, also on the literary front, we were gonna have a bonus special guest this evening, uh, Chaz Howard, who's uh, the chaplain over at Penn and also the, uh, now the VP for um, social equity and community over there. Um, uh, you referenced marginalized populations and he has a new book out called The Bottom, um, A Theopoetic of the Streets, uh, which I just had the pleasure of reading also, uh, which is sort of an, oh, a memoir, a poetry, uh, poetry, prose, memoir, fiction, all interwoven into a reflection on um, our most marginalized and unsheltered neighbors, um, brothers and sisters, and it's gorgeous. Um, I just had a chance to walk with Chaz a little bit and We'll hopefully do a book plug for him in the next show, but um, I will send that out also in the, the next link. Um, yeah, also, Asna, I might ask you to email me a couple more of your favorite book recommendations. We'll include that in the email to everyone who's, who's joined here. Sure. Um, um, I have a lot. 
I believe it. Um, Sarah, thank you for joining us again. And uh, I'll let you introduce yourself along the way as you will, but um, let's have everyone practice our unmuting and give a quick round of applause. Welcome to Sarah for being here. Woo. Well done. Woo woo. Very good. All right, so I'm just, I'm gonna go. That's how this works. I'm off to the races. Okay, hi, thank you very much for having me. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna jump into this. Uh, this is a song called Rosalind. Um, and this is, this is my homage to a woman named Rosalind Franklin, um, pioneer on the genetic, uh, genetic uh, front. Um, so she, you've probably heard of Watson and Crick in terms of DNA uh, and the discovery of like double helix and all that good stuff. Um, a lot of their work was, uh, came off the shoulders of a woman named Rosalind Franklin. And uh, a lot of people don't know her story, but I wanna bring you her story uh, because I think that's really important. She, um, she, she died of, of cancer and was not uh, able to be awarded a, a a Nobel Prize posthumously, but Noble, uh, Noble, but Watson and Crick sort of were like, well, we'll take that. And, and, and there's some controversy over, you know, what she discovered and what was researched and how much, uh, they, they kind of piggybacked off of that and did not give her credit. So, um, she's a, she's a hero of mine. And, uh, I'd like to thank my sister, Rachel, for introducing me to her. So here you go. you both go you stand on my shoulders and take away photo 51 with a shadow you run away when you see the stone that is when you know but you can take away like my x-ray eyes i see
Yeah, thank you. That's it. That's all the energy I have is all slow stuff from here on out. The arm's like, I'm done. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, my name's Sarah Donner. I live in, uh, I live in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Um, and uh, I live in a whaling city. Well, no, we don't whale anymore, but that's like, that was our claim to fame back in ye old days of yore when it was cool. Hmm. And so I, I have a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of nautical and, and ocean kind of imagery when it comes to my, my songwriting and stuff. It's, you know, it's one of those formative things that you can't get rid of. And um, anyways, I'm happy. I'm happy to be one with the ocean um, in the metaphorical sense. Uh, this is called Albatross.
I, I do I really appreciate the class. I do a lot of online shows and usually we don't, we don't, um, bot, well, I don't want to say don't bother, but like, like that, that little, that little motion of pressing the button so I could hear you. It's so great. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I feel validated now. I haven't, I haven't been like a year since I've had. We appreciate you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm going to play uh so I'm going to play a song about game a game. Um this is game. I don't like I don't like to play but some people are very avid players of this game. And um and I respect those people that play it. But uh to me um it's exhausting just to watch and listen to. Uh, <laughs> there's a little peanut gallery over here. Hello. <laughs> Friday night, staring at the table, all your friends with facial hair are here. They've got dice that are so expensive, like really expensive. Who spends that much on dice? full disclosure after I play that song like I did I did I played a little bit but yeah I just I can't I don't yeah that's okay and that's okay that's okay I wanted to try I wanted to be into it but I was not like my 
my husband plays every week. Um, sometimes he's stressed out before he plays because he has to like do some kind of homework where he's got to like level up his character. <laughs> and like he's stressed out about it. And I'm like, how is this? This isn't fun. No, I might I might like Settlers of Catan. That's kind of my limit there. Uh, Jackbox games any time of day. Actually, after after we're done playing here, we're gonna go to do some Jackbox games on my YouTube <laughs> channel. Cause I was like, ah, we need to go do that. All right. Well, oh, my YouTube channel. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's YouTube slash Sarah Donner Party. Um, yeah. So probably around 10 p.m. Gonna go play some bit Jackbox games over there. So anybody is welcome to join over there. Um, all right. Uh, this is this is called Royal Blue. Nope, that's not the one. gonna hold on we're gonna skip on that one <laughs> it's like, suddenly i don't know how to play that song so we'll go to a song we do not play i am a fan of many tunings and many instruments um not quite as fancy um as what was it the harp harp guitar hop hop guitar as we would say here in massachusetts Harp guitar, yep. Harp guitar, harp guitar. Beautiful. Um, this is a song that uh, it's called Lifetime. And I wrote this um, in in love and appreciation and memory of of our critters. Uh, I'm, an, I'm a big uh, animal advocate and specialize in fostering uh, neonatal kittens. And um, that said, be, when you're fostering neonatal kittens, it's usually because there's no mom and there's a very high mortality rate. And that's a difficult part of fostering, but also a part that can bring you a lot of joy because of the wins and the times when um, you can bring a life through uh, the most difficult parts of, of um, its development. And sometimes you can't, and uh, I'm sure, you know, any of you who are particularly attached to your critters, uh, dogs, cats, giraffes, lizards, centipedes, whatever it is that you are attached to, who you are attached to, um, you know, with animals in particular, it's difficult because we don't get to say goodbye the way we want to say goodbye, you know, and, and it's hard to know when it's time. And uh, it's called Lifetime. <laughs> That was a meow that you, yep. Playing a serious song. You came in just a minute long enough to fall in love. Holding on to the hand held to you long enough to give us hope. Heartbeats on the verge of breaking down, and they fade out like the sun sets in the underground. Underground. And I'll save you all. It's up to you. The hardest part is when our heart is only passing through. And I hear them counting hours from towers in the sky. You get what everybody gets. You get a in the dark.
counting hours from towers in the sky you get what everybody gets you get a lifetime Just for you, I can't wait to see you make it blue. Make it blue. I'll save you all my speeches. It was always up to you. The hardest part is when a heart is only. Towers in the sky, you get what everybody gets. You get what everybody gets. You get a lifetime. Lifetime. You get a Thank you. Uh, I have a I have a guest to do some harmony. Oh, Michael McLean, would you join me for a a tune? Of course, sir. You might have to like kick a move guitar, move I'm a guitar, kick them. I'm gonna kick, kick them. them with Just my... kick them out. Okay. All right. Well, I've got the the dad dad tuning handy. This is um. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, yeah. I hadn't even considered like, can we both fit? Like, in the, yeah, yeah, we're gonna make it we're work. Make it work. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You know, he's never gonna be a dad, dad. <laughs> spoiler. Alert. That's a spoiler alert right there. <laughs> um, so I do. I have a bunch of, of records out, and this is a song from one of my first records. Uh, it's called Shadow and Cold. Um. And it's on the sleep you've been missing. <laughs> that was a question mark. No, it is. It I is. feel like I do sing during the verses. Maybe we should have rehearsed. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You were very confident when I was like, "You got this." No, we do sing on the verses. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna work out. It's fine. It's, it's great. It's great. Okay. Great. Great. We're professionals. Yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> your happiness because you define success with what you don't have well i have many things but none of what i bring can bring you back your sense of living why are you so enamored with your shadow and cold child the things you used to make the clay is nothing till you mold it the dark is beautiful when you can see the light oh can you see the light can you hold it why are you so enamored with your shadow Nothing grows And I have left that garden in dirty clothes And I wish that I knew, but I don't know And it's hard to say I love you when you Man. 
enamored with your shadow and cold. Whatever you want, you can just do it now. Why are you so enamored with your shadow? portion of the evening. I mean, the whole evening. So there's always cats in this room. So. <clears throat> but uh, yes, this next song, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm an advocate, advocate for animals. And there is a particular cat um, that I feel never really had a voice. And it was uh, Schrodinger's cat. So, um, this is called the rebuttal of Schrodinger's cat. Uh, yeah, it's like just so you know, there's a cat. It's just like, it's right there. Yeah. Nope. She, nope. <laughs> She's like, I'm not here. Just kidding. Don't put it down. Don't make me part of your show. She's like, I'm not going to pay enough for treats. All right. <laughs> In multiple states at the same time, I'll take the one where I'm still alive. When I get out, I'll live with Einstein. And I will because I have nine lives. I will chase your theory, it's just made of string. Without observation, I'm doing all the things. I would not be in this box with hydrocyanide. If I could call PETA in 1935, open up and measure this absurdity. I'll teach you about superposition. So Schrodinger, at the end of his life, uh, he did say, I, I think he got a lot of pushback <laughs> from, from other animal folks. Uh, and he, he said at the, uh, towards the end of his life, he had wished, he wished he had never met that damn cat. So I feel like that somehow that damn cat won, won on the end. Um, all right. This is a song called Athena. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
This is an out of tune ukulele. Hold on. Doot doot. Oh, hi. Yeah. This poor girl hasn't hasn't had much love in the past couple weeks. Am I hitting right? Yes, I am. Okay. Get it. There we go. ukulele it might look impressive because I can play all these instruments but this one has the same tuning as the guitar so it's like playing like less guitar basically it's like it's like cheap ass guitar you were born in old Kentucky under stars and signs unlucky never meant to be a beauty queen still you read my notes and letters holding to the whole Better things were waiting on the other side. You've been with me for a long, long time. Around the world and you're still on my mind. You, oh, gosh. You're counting the days gone by. I was circling beneath the sky. Never knowing if the sun would set. In this, in this, in the, in these dark times, um, where I'm sure we're all struggling in our own ways, mentally, and uh, even before these dark times, many of us are struggling mentally. Um, but um, I subscribe uh, to my own theory called putting on the pants um, to try and and get. My my day rolling just get my brain in a place where it's like okay I could do I could do one thing today. Hopefully the first thing is getting out of bed, and then the second thing for me is I, I is putting on pants. And back in excuse me back in the times when I could go to a gym, 
um, you know, is putting on my, my workout clothes, look, you know, my, my yoga pants or whatever. And just that little action at the beginning of the day of putting on those pants meant you have a task to do today. It is called going to the gym or doing something active because you have active pants on. And, uh, that was really important for my brain to get me to do this thing that I knew would overall help uh, my myself mentally in the course of the day. And so for, you know, some people it is, you know, going into the art studio, some people it's, you know, <laughs> turning on their computer or shutting off their computer or, you know, whatever mm. that little, there's a little thing that you can do for your brain that kind of sets you up for the next activity that's going to be healthy um, for you. I think that's really important to acknowledge and just find that little thing. Um, and so, um, so for me, you know, it's called putting on the pants. So this is a song about that and uh, it's called Phoenix. And, and when we get to the bridge, I'll just let you know, I was listening to a lot of Hamilton when I wrote the song. So that'll explain the bridge. Okay. Question is, is do I use a capo? Yes, I do use a capo. Okay. Thank you, Google Docs, for letting me know.
Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I've got a couple more for you all. Thank you so much for having me. Hello. This is Nee, uh, as in the Knights Who Say Nee. She was part of a litter of kittens that were uh, Monty Python themed. Um, she really wants to sit on my lap right now. She's just, she's just going to be passive aggressive about it until we can get to that point. <laughs> Neeners. And she must really want to sit on a lap because normally she doesn't put up with music. She usually leaves the room. Um, um, so this song is, um, this is a post pandemic song. Uh, only it was only able to be written after uh, the election in November. It was sort of like uh, I was commissioned to write a song from the author uh, Pat Rothfuss, and it was supposed to be about what you're looking forward to in the future. And the commission started like was I don't know maybe in September or October, and the deadline was sometime in mid-November, slightly after the election. I know I just couldn't like I couldn't I couldn't who could right. Um, and I was able to write this, uh, yeah, mid, mid November. This is the song that, that poured out of me. Um, and all my stuff is on, on Spotify and, uh, all these streaming services, but, um, thank you to JJ for, for mentioning, you know, if you want to support us, um, <laughs> cold hard cash is great. Bandcamp is great because, uh, artists get the biggest cut on Bandcamp. Um, So I do, I do have a store and a website. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. And there's a music video featuring this pony. Um, this is ch called Chastity Pony. And I won't explain why right now. But if you want to join me in the breakout room, we can talk about why this, why this is called Chastity Pony. Um, but she's the feature of they. Sorry, they. It's a, actually, it's nay. Nay are their pronouns. Um, <laughs> don't choke on drinks peanut gallery over here okay um but yeah nay are are featured in the music video for this song all right it's called when we can touch somewhere a voice is singing somewhere a hand is hanging on everyone's sick of sitting Staring at screens and waiting on all oh, those promises they made. I'm so sick of this charade. There is a kinder future. There is a home that's just beyond. We're going to tie the sutures.
yet uh, uh consumable for for consumable it's not, it's not released yet but it's coming out next month um <clears throat> it's a very serious song about loss um specifically of a body part and um cut it out <laughs> <laughs> it's still there i know i know still 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 um so anyways, I just, I'll, I'll mention real briefly, uh, you can, you can follow me on all the, on the, all the things, Sarah Donner party on Instagram, Sarah Donner. Um, I do have mostly kitten content because of, uh, my foster work. I do not let those kittens, uh, they do not get free lunches here. They need to perform, um, for, for me and my music videos. So, <laughs> so yeah, if you want to see kittens and some silly songs, check those things out. Um, <coughs> Inhale some wine. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> <coughs> To, I'd like to, I'd like to, this is a uh, thank you for, for all the population of, of dudes who have made the sacrifice, the greatest sacrifice of all. Who's not attached to their gametes? My husband got a vasectomy. Now he can come, come inside of me. What a best difference from what used to be. I don't need to rely on my memory. Fifteen minutes on his back and no sex for a week. Twenty minutes on his lap, a bag of frozen peas. retired now it's all juice and no seeds my husband got a vasectomy now he can come come inside of me now you said what a bad difference from what used to be get it up here's to victory i say snip snip hooray i say snip snip hooray i say snip snip Uh, <laughs> you get a breast removal? You don't 
Hooray, hooray, hooray. Thank you all. Uh, hooray for this evening. Um, hooray for all three of these sets of um, art shared with us. Hooray for all of you coming in, um, coming and um, yeah, uh, sharing and listening. Um, really grateful. If you enjoyed this evening, there's two more coming up. So that's exciting. Uh, March 13th and April 10th. Uh, both will feature a little bit of traditional Mexican music influences in one of the sets, and both will feature some lyrics that are hard to keep track of, because Lauren Benedict is playing the first one on March 13th and does some amazing vocal improv scat craziness. And Joshua Marcus on April 10th has the magic skill of um, putting a lot of syllables into any verse, and it's challenging to keep track of. Um, for those of you who are looking for some extra online points of connection shared activity like this um, next Saturday uh, and every first and third Saturday I'm hosting a little listening together sessions where we actually turn the screens off and we turn the cameras off and the microphones and we do a deep dive into one of Krista Tippett's unedited interviews from the on beating radio shows and, um, and you're invited to join that if you'd like it's, uh, it's a nice opportunity to listen together and then have a little bit of discussion and community afterwards for folks interested in that. I'll send a follow-up email. I'm not on all the things, so you can't follow me on all the things. So the email list is really the only way that I'm sharing stuff out. So I will send a follow-up to folks who RSVP'd um, with invites to the next things. Um, and um, that's what I've got right now. Um, I'm really, again, it's a, it's a precious thing to be able to share and, and gather and support artists. So I will also send you links uh, in the follow-up as to how to find your way to their websites, how to buy some other stuff, how to send them some money. I'm going to already send them a bunch of money. So thank you to everyone who chipped in on the sliding scale tickets here. Super grateful. And um, yeah, I think it's important to like not only support them for the work they've already done, but sort of uplift what they will do next. Um, like new songs coming out, congrats, Sarah. Um, so we're now going to, poof, we're now gonna go into the last breakout rooms. Uh, you can hang out and chat with the artists if you want. That's the end of uh, our official evening program. So um, again, uh, for Sarah, for Karen and Paul, for Husna, let's give one last round of applause and um, thank you all again for, for just being part of this. I hope that you go forward inspired from this. Uh, to do well and be well in the world. And Thank let's applause for JJ for putting this all together. Yay. Yay. Thank you all. Totally a pleasure, totally a gift. <laughs>